Hello, my name is Nick Han, and I'm a visual arts teacher in an elementary school. Today, we're going to do a day in the life of this art teacher. We're going to start from my morning routine, the things that I do to prepare for the day, as well as things that I have to do to recover from yesterday. We're also going to take a look at my five classes that I teach in a day, all different age groups. In those classes, you'll see tips like how to distribute materials, the different lessons that we're working on, as well as some classroom management tips. At the end of the day, of course, we wrap up with a little bit of cleanup and preparation for the next day. I would really appreciate it if you would like this video right now and then go ahead and follow and subscribe to the Art of Education University because we have more videos like this, A Day in the Life, as well as some great tips and tricks for art teachers out there just like you. Generally, the first thing that I like to do when I enter my classroom is get started on my cart. So my last hour of the day is taught in the classroom. We're over capacity, so we have two art teachers at that time. I have a traveling teacher that comes into my class, and then I go into the homeroom classrooms on a cart. So the first thing that I like to do is offload the work from last yesterday's students. It is my last hour, and so I just let it dry overnight. And then that's the first thing that I do in the morning is I offload everything. I adjust all the supplies, making sure that I have enough for the class that I'll be teaching today, making sure that it's nice and organized. I have my project samples ready to go and I have my supplies that I need to demonstrate. And then I grab the class that I'm working on today make sure that's on the cart and I go ahead and put it back in the closet so that it is out of the way for my teaching for most of the day and just ready to rock and roll when it's time to move into the classrooms. There's a couple of things that makes teaching in the, the classroom, out of my classroom, a little bit better and easier. I make my images of the task for the day ahead of time. So I tell the students what they're going to do. I give them visuals and then where they're going to put their artwork and then what they can do if they accomplish that job. The whole process is making these ornamental corn. We're really practicing how to cut and how to glue, just kind of working on those skills, which it turns out were very necessary this year. So slowing it down, making a simple project that really concentrates on those ideas, putting it on the drying rack. And then the three extensions are, I have a seesaw extension where students can draw a digital ornamental corn, a coloring sheet where students can take it home. And then I have a found object so they can still use that coloring sheet. It's just a simple, when I say coloring sheet, it's not like color it all in. There's a lot of option to go different directions. All of these look different at the end. They fill in the kernels, however they so choose, fill in the husk, or they can use found objects. That's the last option. I have little puff balls here that they can place on top to make their kernels and then they have to find objects around the room. What is going to make the husk of this corn? So this is an option for students as well. It's really interesting what students choose out of these three and I've found it to be different for every single class that I walk into. It's good to have three different options. Also included on this cart is actual ornamental corn. So I have enough for every pair of students to have a corn and touch it and feel it and ask questions and see what a real ornamental corn is. This has been the highlight of this lesson, bringing in nature, having students learn the different terms of a corn. And then we're actually talking about indigenous people and the importance of corn to that culture. So there's a lot of meaning behind the simple skills that we're going over in the class. This whole setup is for my kindergarten. It's the first day that I'm teaching the kindergarten this lesson, as far as first time of the week, I guess I should say. This week, they will be filling in the last two squares by using tracers. We're gonna talk about using tracers and colored pencils. Because it's the first day, I sharpened all the colored pencils for them. An objective for this lesson isn't about sharpening pencils, but it will be an extension at the end of the day when students have free choice. One of the choices is helping me out sharpening those pencils for the next day. 
first class I have today is fourth grade. So what I'm doing is getting their folders ready, getting the materials that they need ready. And as you can see, I have Sharpies. This is for the red table. They get four fat Sharpies and two skinny markers. These are placed back like this and on the re rainbow countertop at the end of class. And therefore I can go ahead and just check to make sure all the caps are there and all the Sharpies are there. At the start of class, I invite my students in with a smile and a sign on the door. This might invite them to place their materials on the countertop or to go to their seat or sit spot on the carpet. It might also instruct them to look for instructions on the board or for my older kids on Schoology. This both welcomes and tells my students how to prepare for the hour. I often use videos for quick information. Sometimes this video is instructional and sometimes it's sheerly enrichment for the lesson that we're going to be learning. I use this time to set up my room. It doubles myself as a teacher. This year I am meeting the students where they're at. I'm finding that the skills I could count on in the past are simply not there. So breaking down the lesson to boost self-esteem is critical right now. I'm not just building physical skills in my students, but also emotional endurance. I want to encourage them to have the belief in themselves to be creators and to be able to do challenging things. Sometimes you just have to roll with the kids. After settling the group down and getting them into learning mode using some visuals, students wanted to share some information with me. I call this riding the wave, allowing my students to share the information and then using a countdown to bring them back into learning mode. Flipping my classroom or recording instruction ahead of time is critical to setting up supplies in a schedule that welcomes one class while another class leaves. This lets me quietly and slowly turn over the supplies in my classroom. I break down my class periods for my youngest artists into several lessons. I give an introduction, we do some art-based activities, maybe two or three of them, and then I turn my attention to supporting the skills like friendship, sharing, and compromise. The best way to practice these skills is through play. A quick formative assessment can look like a game to students. Here I am quizzing my students on a game that I taught them last time to see if they remember the concepts of warm and cool colors. Anytime I can bring nature into the classroom, I do. Listen to the excitement of these third graders as they get to see and touch ornamental corn for the first time. Colors. The formula that I'm giving my students on the board allows my students to be successful for the first time of using a large format paper. I use a lot of videos in my classroom, but old fashioned gathering around the table is a very effective way to share instruction and the experience with your students. While on a cart, I use my cart top and a clipboard to demonstrate my instructions. Having visual instruction for my students ahead of time has been beneficial for both me and my students. It's nice for me to simply use the magnets, place it up on the board, and it's definitely beneficial for my students to become independent learners throughout the class period. Using actions to reflect on the process that we have just done is one of my favorite ways to wrap up a lesson with my youngest artists. I'm at the end of my day. It's my second prep. So I have a half hour prep in the morning and a half hour preparation in the afternoon. And right now, currently, I don't have any duties. So this entire half hour is just for me to wrap things up. At the end of the day, as I mentioned, I share my room with another art teacher. So she comes in, teaches the kindergartners in here while I'm in the other room teaching from the cart. So when I come back, all the chairs are up. The room has been clean. Things look great. I can leave my cart to the wayside if I have opportunity. And if the supplies are dry or the projects are dry on the drying rack, I can pull those off. Otherwise, I leave that most often for the morning. Brushes from today were washed already in my second Everything is kind of organized so that I can walk in tomorrow and feel secure in what I'm doing. 
That looks like a busy day, but it's not even the half of it for this art teacher. Outside of the classroom, I'm doing mom tasks, such as running my daughter to school because she missed the bus, or getting supper ready in the crock pot, doing a quick workout in the morning, listening to inspirational podcasts, and then, of course, the commute. Commuting home and going ahead and starting all over again the next day. That was just one day in my life. Every day looks different. I try to have some routine. That's close to what it looks like every day, but there's always challenges and ways to pivot every single day. Hey, thanks for watching today. If you have not already, be sure to like this video, subscribe, and check out the rest of the resources that the Art of Education University has to offer.